chapter 5, we will have the labor supply and the overseas Filipino workers. Wages and population growth. No? So here are our learning competency. No? So I'll try to summarize it na lang, and then we will have the recitation. So our topic is equilibrium labor supply, overseas Filipino workers, wages and population. So <coughs> sorry. So ano ba yung mga influences naman sa demand? No? Ito yung mga major applied applied part ng chapter 4 natin. One, you will have the flow of demand. No? Uh, kindly read, eh na, mag recitation na tayo tiyante. Kindly read flow of demand, Mr. Lalaki muna, lalaki muna. <laughs> Mr. Lagdameo. Flow of demand. Lagdameo. Sira pa rin ba yung mic mo? Okay, ano pa tayo sa? Mr. Re, Mr. Refugia, kindly read flow of demand. Flow of demand. The quantities of products are relative to a time frame and demand is seen as the flow of purchases over a different period of time. Okay, thank you. So, medyo mahaba kasi yung explanation ng book. Pero... Ito na, no? sinorten ko na lang. Ang sample ng book is, let's say, a fish vendor will want to know the quantity of a fish. No? Ang binigay niya na sample is yung pampano. Hindi ko alam itsura ng pampano. No? That he can sell at 350 per kilo. So sabi nga, yung pampano per kilo is 350 pesos. Pero dahil nagkaroon ng bagyo recently, tumaas yung presyo ng pampano naging 500. Okay. So, syempre, magkakaroon ka ng problema sa demand. Nagkaroon ng konting interruption, tumaas, so people will most likely avoid buying pampano muna. No? Wag muna, kasi masyadong mahal. No? Like yung pork. Nung recently nga, tumakas ang pork. Bakit? Ang maraming factors. Yung iba, wala ng pera. No? They rather decided to close their piggeries. Others naman, eh, siguro, marami, meron nagkaroon ng sakit, putin mo, disease. So that's why tumakas ang presyo ng pork. Or another reason is that malakas na talaga kumain ng Pilipino ngayon ng pork due to Demand sa samgyup, sa pork chop, and other pork products. Next, price of the product. Nalaki muna tayo. No? Para ano? Uh, Mr. Arrogante, kindly read price of the product. The most important factor that affects the demand. Of course. No? Thank you. So, syempre, Laging i-consider mo yung presyo. Hindi ka naman basta-basta bibili ng item na, ah, basta nakita ko tong cellphone na to. Ito yung presyo nun. Bibili ko kagad. No? Most of us already have an idea kung magkano yung bibili mong product. And that product has its affects demand. Of course, mas marami yung mga mas murang items. Mas maraming bibili ng mga mas cheaper items compared to more expensive items. Ang haba ng sample dito, no? Okay. When the price of a product increases, its demand decreases. Siyempre, tumaas ang presyo, of course, people will be wary. Or, imbis na bibili sila ng pork nga, bibili na lang kami ng chicken. O yung iba, magugulay na lang kami. <clears throat> the presumption is that of a normal good, <clears throat> all things being constant or set as paribus, people will always pay for a lower price for a product. 
of the same quality. So kung hanggat maaari, you have two items, two similar products, two same specifications, no? Medyo technical na yan, specifications. You will prepare, you will prefer to buy the cheaper one. A good example is samgyupsal. No? People will say 399 dito kahit hindi niya masyadong kilala, then they will eat at the 399 compared to the usual price of 499 pesos. Doon nangyayari yung price of the product. Malaking impact yan. Kaya minsan, yung mga magkakalaban no, ng mga tindahan, nag-uusap-usap yan na kailangan same lang ang, prad, ang price para walang, walang masasapawan. Okay. Number three. Uh, wait lang ha. Kindly read Mr. Patricio. Hala. Patricio. Hala. O sige, ano muna, Miss Almendares? Kindly read prices of other products. Ah, prices. Prices of other prices. Substitute and complementary goods. <laughs> ah, yan, no? May points sa kagad si Miss Almendares. No. So sabi rito sa book, prices can either be complements or substitutes. No? So ano po ba yung complements, sir? Yung usually kasama ng isang item. If the products are complementary, then a price increase will reduce consumption of the complement as well. Huh? So, ang binigay na sample ng book ay tennis racket and tennis balls. So, usually, pag bibili ka ng tennis racket, then you will have to buy tennis ball. Hindi naman po tayo bibili ng golf balls pag bumili ka ng tennis racket. Huh? Or Sa food naman, sometimes uh, pag bibili ka ng siopaw, minsan may kasamang mami. Bihira naman yung bibili ka ng siopaw tapos ang ipapartner mo ay tuyo. Or razor and blades. No? Pag bibili ka ng shaving cream, usually meron siyang kasamang blade. No? Unless uh, meron, ka ng, meron ka ng binili sa bahay. If products are substitutes, then a price increase will increase the consumption of the substitutes. A good example yung binanggit ko kanina, yung butter. Palaman nyo sa bahay is butter. And then, nagtaas ang butter, tipong sabi mo, uh, I will rather not buy butter na lang masyadong mahal eh. Then bibili na lang muna ako ng margarine until bumaba yung presyo. Or until okay na ako. That is prices of other prices. Next, income available for spending. Ms. Reyes, Alia. Reyes. A rising income leads to a rise of demand. Inferior goods are such that demand shifts. Therefore, my income increases. Okay, now thank you. So... Iyan ko lang ulit, no? income after spending or after deducting the tax is disposable income. Uh, yun na lang yung pwede mong magastos. Uh, meanwhile, disposable income after deducting the household expenses. Uh, ano po ba yung mga household expenses? Pagkain, utilities, renta. Uh, it's called discretionary income. For normal goods that comprise the majority of goods and services, the change in demand is the same direction as change in income. A rise in income, ito na yun, leads to a rise in demand. So, syempre, katulad nung binanggit ko kanina, kunwari si Ms. Reyes bagong pasok sa company. Huh? So, bagong... Let's say, bagong graduate siya, na masukat siya sa company, usually minimum ang wage or kung ano yung entry-level wage or salary ang ibibigay kay Ms. Reyes. So, yun lang ang pwede niyang gastusin na pera unless mangungutang siya sa mga, ano yung tawag doon? Robocash, cash up. No? But, 
no na promote si Ms. Reyes, then mas marami na siyang opportunities mag-try ng ibang pagkain. Kunwari dati, nung empleyado siya, nagbabaon lang siya or kumakain lang siya sa Jollibee. Nung nagkaroon na ng promotion, na promote si Ms. Reyes, then she can eat wherever she wants. Pwede siyang kumain sa fine dining, pwede siyang kumain sa samgyupsal almost every day. No? Yun yung sinasabi ni ito. No? A rise in income leads to a rise in demand. Okay, next. There is a class of goods known as inferior goods. No? Hindi naman siya inferior na ibig sabihin eh, pangit siya. No? Meron lang siyang uh, Inferior goods are such that demand shifts leftward when income increases. So dati maraming pera, nagkaroon ng crisis, hindi ka na bumibili ng mga designer clothing, no? hindi ka na bumibili ng mga gas, ano pa ba? Hindi ka na bumibili ng Supreme, peke na lang yung Supreme mo, bumibili ka na lang ng mga uh, yung isa tiyanggi na damit, ganun na lang. So, sabi nga rito, inferior goods are such that demand shifts leftward when income increases. Huh? So, mas hindi na napapansin ang inferior good pag tumataas ang sweldo. Next. Okay, huh? Sino ba pwede natin tawagin dito? Uh, Miss Alamo, kindly read price and availability of money and credit. Alam mo, alam mo, number two, ayaw, no? Yes, Miss Brazal. Ay, hindi, natawag na kita, sorry, sorry. Natawag na kita, okay na. Uh, Miss Canufin. Asa na, Canufin. Nahiya. Miss Canufin, kindly read. Hindi ako naririnig. Canufin, kindly read. Ayaw, nahiya. Wait lang ha. Sige, mas bad. Miss mas bad, kindly read na lang. Mas bad. Ayaw. Nahiya sila magbasa, no? Okay. Sige, Miss Cruz na lang. Kindly read price and availability. Most goods and services are bought with borrowed money, particularly in a consumer-oriented society such as the Philippines. Credit definitely increases demand aside from the income factor. Okay, no, thank you. So, yun na yun. <laughs> okay. Usually naman no, sa Pilipinas and in a greater extent sa Amerika, no, uh, plastic ang pera. Or utang, credit card, credit card, loans. No? Of course, ito, credit definitely increases demand. Siyempre, meron kang credit, tatas ang demand ng mga items. Kasi kung wala kang credit, walang demand. No? Okay, if the interest rates increase, dun sa mga credit cards natin, no? then the cost of credit rises and there is likely to be a reduction in the demand for goods. So, syempre, tumaas yung ano, mag-aalangan mag ka ng gumamit ng credit card. So, magbabawasan yung demand for the goods that you will prefer to purchase. Especially dun sa mga luxury goods and services. Next. Uh, ano na ba? Ayan. Market, ay. Market size, kindly read. Uh, Miss Borka. Rinig po? Yes. 
market size, population, social media, and the prevalence of the internet influence market size and certain products are now globalized and available to the Hoy poloy. <laughs> to the hoy poloy. Okay. Okay. So you will discuss, you will encounter market size more on your marketing subject now. Pero on the economic standpoint naman, kasi population and social media will affect your market size mo. Unlike nung, nung unang panahon nung wala pang internet, hindi mo kalaban yung seller sa kiapo. It's either the buyer will go to Quiapo or pupunta ka sa ibang lugar. Let's say, taga Pasig ka din. Bumili ka na lang malapit sa Pasig ng items na yun. Huh? But nowadays, lahat kalaban mo na eh. Nagtitinda ka ng, let's say, face mask sa Pasig. May isang kalaban mo, nagtitinda ng face mask dyan sa may Muntinlupa or sa Manila. Huh? Yan. Okay. Yung hoy poloy, no, ito, ito muna tayo. Dati kasi yung mga items, usually yung mga mayayaman lang ang bumibili. Bihirang-bihira lang bumili ang mga nasa gitna. But due to social media and the influencer market, no, lumaki yung market size. And certain products are now globalized and available to the hoy poloy, which is, kung sa Tagalog ay masa. No? Ito. First world countries such as the US and certain European countries like Germany and France have seen a decrease of their population. So, tayo lang yata ang Pilipinas ang dumadami ng dumadami. No? Masipag. Masipag ang Pilipino. Lalo na yung mga kabataan nila. So, nagka, tumatanda ng tumatanda yung population nila. Youth-oriented products such as infant foods have seen a decrease in income, especially in the Western countries. Pero dito sa Pilipinas, ang benta ng mga damit ng bata, mga diaper, uh, tawag dito, pona, no? yung stroller. Sa so Japan naman, mas mabenta yung ating mga adult diaper no? kaysa sa mga baby diapers. However, they are still profitable in growing population countries, including tayo, Philippines and Vietnam. Okay. Another sample nitong market size is the airfare. Noon, nung 1980s, 1990s, ang mga tao, no, mga empleyado, hindi naman palalabas ng bansayan. Eh. Either aalis lang ng bansayan para magtrabaho din, no, OFW, or for business purposes. Let's say, meron silang katransaksyon na supplier sa ibang bansa or pinadala sila ng boss nila pumunta, let's say, ng Singapore. No? But now, the availability of cheap airfare has increased the level of tourist travels worldwide. And this impacts on the possibility that certain products have become globalized. Kahit sino, pwede na ngayon pumunta na ibang bansa, kahit mga empleyado. No? Noon, ang empleyado usually nasa bahay lang. Bahay, skwela. Bahay, skwela. Or bahay, office, bahay, office. Pero ngayon, pwede na mag BL, pupunta ako ng Let's say, Boracay, or pupunta ko ng uh, Cebu. No? Ngayon, mas accessible na. Another good example is yung mga K-pop. No? K-pop Korean items, mga kimchi. No, wala namang mga ganyan, kimchi, gochujang. Ang alam ng mga tao, no? mga Pilipino for the Korean items, is yung ginseng nung 90s. Pero ngayon, iba na. Iba na ang panahon. Kimchi na ngayon. Uh, you have yung ano ba ba yun? Uh, yung soju and other stuff. Huh? Okay. Next. Mag-extend mag na lang tayo ng konti. No? Marketing efforts and consumer taste. Uh, Miss Larissa, nandiyan ba siya? Sir. Yes. Marketing efforts and consumer taste increase the visibility of consumer products and services through advertising. Okay. So medyo ano to, no? teaser lang ng marketing subject nyo, no? Uh, marketing efforts, no? 
Kanina pa bell ng bell. <laughs> okay. Asa na? So, they had increased the visibility of consumer products and services. Noon, TV lang eh. Kung ayaw mo makakita ng commercial, patayin mo lang yung TV. Or jaryo lang. Pero ngayon, no, non-stop. Punta ka ng Instagram, merong commercial. Punta ka ng YouTube, may commercial. Punta ka ng Facebook, may commercial. This means that just by putting them on the shelves of groceries, they will be bought quickly. Indirect na yung marketing ngayon eh. Unlike noon, you have to pay for some ads. Ads, wala ads. No? Para lang makabenta ka. Pero ngayon, konting bayad lang sa Facebook, konting boost lang, makakabenta ka na. Okay. Therefore, most have to be market, marketed more extensively through advertising efforts. So, yung mga gumagawa ng commercial, no, in demand sila kasi they can present the product on a different light. A good example is yung Old Spice. Huh? Ano naman ba kinalaman ni, eh, pangalan nito? Yung black guy si, uh, forgot that, forgot the name, no? sikat siyang actor. Riding on a horseback. Ano ba kinalaman nun sa deodorant? Uh, they're, they're trying to find creative ways to make the product much more remembered and visible. Advertising tries to influence customers' taste, but this can be very fickle as the taste of people can change overnight. No? A good example, ano na nangyari sa Dalgona Coffee? No? Last year, during the quarantine, everybody is doing their best to make Dalgona coffee. Yours truly included. Pero ngayon, wala na. Wala, nang, wala ka na marinig na gumagawa ng Dalgona coffee. Or sa mga food trends, ang mga medyo nagtagal lang is yung samgyupsal, yung milk tea, and yung ramen. But yung ibang items, iba eh. Iba yung food trends, let's say, ng US compared to the Philippines. Huh? So, a successful company can predict with a certain amount of certainty the changes in taste and preferences. So, market research. Ano ba ang gusto ng mga tao? But that doesn't mean na yung gusto nila ngayon will be the same as the next day. There can be changes that will happen. So, here we have the equation and model of summary on the influences of demand. So, pinakita ko lang equation, but we will rather not have any computations. No? So, if you would like to study economics in more detail, ito yun. Wherein QD is the quantity demanded. Gaano karami ang kailangan mong product. PO, P sub zero, is the own price. No? Presyo ng item mo. And then, PA is the prices of other goods. Actually, hindi siya Y. Pero sige, Y. YD is income. Magkano kinikita mo? M, market size. A, advertise. Uh, yeah, marketing. No? A is marketing. And T is consumer taste. Ano yung panlasa ng isang customer? And then influences on supply naman. So, may konting introduction lang na. Profit is the goal of doing business. Huwag na huwag niyo kakalimutan niya na ABM students. Ha? Walang business ang nagbukas para mag-donate. Pero naman, CSR. Pero as much as possible, kailangan kumikita pa rin yung business mo. No business exists without profit in mind. It is the difference between gross revenues and costs. So, na ano na natin profit sa statement of comprehensive income. If the price remain constant and costs rise, then profits fall and the companies can be less willing to supply goods and services. Siyempre, tumataas yung presyo mo, hindi ka basta-basta makapag-price hike. Kasi yung mga kalaban mo, ganun pa rin ang presyo. A good example is the milk tea. Yung friend ko, no, 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 nung nag-consult 
naging consultant ako ng milk tea business niya, he was hesitating na I think kailangan ko magtaas ng konti. Another 5 pesos. Sabi ko, based on your, ano, ano, on your market, medyo malabo pag nagtaas ka ng 5 pesos. Baka hindi ka napatulan ng mga uh, tawag dito, customers mo. Because he's on the lower end of the spectrum rather than yung gitna. So, anong gagawin niya? Then, he will have to shoulder the burden na lang. Tapos, hintayin niya yung tamang time na magtasya siya ng 5 or 10 pesos regardless. So, here are the influences on supply. So, kindly read. Sige pa bang hindi ko natatawag? Uh, okay ka na, Miss Brazal. Natawag na kita. Sige. Miss Tanaka, natawag ko na ba? Yeah, Miss Tanaka. Not yet. Sir, now pa lang po. Okay. Cost of factors and other inputs. Any changes in cost with price staying constant will change the profit expectation and will certainly influence decisions regarding supply. Okay. So, nasa na? Yun na yun, no? eh, Pag nagbago raw yung cost, no? Nagbago yung mga cost mo, pero impression mo is the same. Siyempre, liliit yung profit expectation mo. Kasi typically, naka-forecast na yung profit mo eh. But kung mayroong biglang aberya, tumas yung supplier, yung presyo ng mga supplies mo, tumas yung utilities mo, uh, dumami yung empleyado mo, then there can be a problem. So, magkakaroon ka ng decision making regarding the supply. Ayan na. So, there are four factor inputs no, na discuss na natin. Land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurial. The factor costs are rent for land and capital, uh, wages for labor, profits for entrepreneurial skills. Yun lagi ang iisipin nyo. Sa lupa, kailangan may renta ka or yung uh, amilyar mo kung ikaw may-ari. Tapos yung mga pasweldo mo sa mga nagtatrabaho para sa'yo. And then, of course, you as the entrepreneur, magkano kikitain mo sa undertaking na yan? Number two, changes in taxes. Mahaba lang to konti. Yes, Miss Mas Bad. Changes in taxes. Any changes rate will affect the profits anticipated in the supply. It will tend to reduce the quantity that companies are willing to supply at all prices in a given price range. Conversely, a decrease in tax rates tend to stimulate the production of products and services. Okay. So, nag-discuss na tayo ng taxation ng last, <coughs> sorry, last term. Huh? Iba lang ng konti yung nandito. If the government tax is imposed at any stage of the production, so nag-tax ka rito, uh, income tax, tax sa mga tao, tumas yung tax, train, uh, sitira, whatsoever, syempre, tatamaan na naman yung profits mo. No? Thus, affecting supply intentions. An increase in the production tax, yun yan, no? katulad ng VAT, has a similar ef effect to the increase in factor cost. So, kasi, kasi kailangan mo i-factor yung VAT. Ano ba gagawin mo? Tatanggapin mo muna yung tax or ipapasa mo sa buyer? Pag binasa mo kasi sa buyer, then mag-hesitate yung mga tao. Let's say, tumas ang 10 pesos. Parang sa iba, okay lang. Okay lang magdagdag ng 10 pesos kung talaga naman kirapat dapat magtaas. Pero for others, they might go for cheaper alternatives. No? Kahit alam nila mas okay yung product mo, then they will be forced to buy cheaper items. A good example, no? pasintabi na lang sa mga lalaki. No? Uh, last year, we did a survey. Ano? Two years ago, sorry. Two years ago, we did a survey sa, for female products, sanitary products. No? Most people will buy the cheaper brand of sanitary pads. Like yung Kinalimutan ko na talaga eh. Sorry. Ano ba yung mga tatak na yun? Yun. Basta yun, yung mga mas, 
mga nasa gitna. So, minsan kasi pag masyadong mataas yung whisper, yung mga modest cortex, then they will go to the cheaper, yung mga sisters, charmy. Pero kung meron silang pera, meron silang extra pera, extra pera, then most people, most women that we interviewed on the survey will prefer yung mga high-end products. Huh? So, kasi mas mataas yung tax nung mga let's say imported no yung mga Cotex meron pa isa eh kalimutan ko yung isang brand no rather than yung mga uh, cheaper products mas malaki ang tax conversely a decrease in tax rates tend to stimulate the production of products and services pero bihira mangyari na bumaba yung tax usually tumataas po yung tax natin next Changes in technology, uh, hanap tayo. Okay ka na, Ms. Mamaradlo. No? Si, si... Yes, Mr. Medina Ashley. Changes in technology. Production can be achieved with fewer factor inputs or with a different combination of factors, thereby lowering total cost and increase the quantity that can be supplied. Some types of technology are available on a large scale using the economies of scale. Thank you. Uh, so, iba yata yung definition ko rito, na, pero uh, sige lang. So, changes in technology, it is an improvement. Of course, yung technology, kaya nga tinawag na technology, it's more about improvement, hindi perfection. There's no such thing as perfection, but constant improvement only. Huh? That allows a given level of production that can be achieved with fewer factor inputs or with a different combination of factors. So that the total cost is lower will tend to increase the quantity that is likely to be supplied. For example, uh, yung isang company na pinagtrabahuan ko, nagko-construct sila ng warehouse. Huh? And one of our clients is you mega box. So they have so they, have, they have many machines, no? but every few years they are improving. They are changing some machinery every few years or so. Hindi naman kasi pwedeng sabay-sabay papalitan may machine. You have to fully utilize. When is the right time? When is the right place? When is the right scenario to replace your machine? So let's say yung machine na una, papalitan ng Machine 2 na lang. Machine 1 and Machine 2. Si Machine 1 kaya niya mag-produce ng 10,000 na uh, plastic containers every day. And then si Machine 2 can produce up to 30,000 per day. Mas mabilis. And then it also uses less polyurethane, polyurethane uh, plastics. No? So, Mas mabilis na, mas efficient na, mas konti pa yung raw material sa kailangan gamitin. At mas matibay pa. No? So, ito yung nag-provide ng economies of scale. Bumababa yung uh, production cost nila. Production cost nila and then tumataas yung volume of production. Yun yung changes of technology. No? Or another, no? Uh, before cellphone, ano ba yung, uh, before yung mga Android phones natin, 1, 2, 3 lang naman ang cellphone eh. Thus, nagkaroon ng changes in technology. Dati, kung mag internet ka, you have to go to your computer, your PC, or your laptop para lang makapag-Facebook. But now, nasa cellphone lang, pwede ka na. Hindi mo na kailangan umupo sa computer shop. Yan. Those are changes in technology. Next. Efficiency and effectiveness. No? So we have already discussed this in Orgman, pero ulitin lang natin. Uh, si pa ba hindi ko natawag? Miss, uh, Miss Alamo, bawe, bawe. Efficiency and effectiveness. Efficiency means producing your products or services at, at the least possible cost, whereas effectiveness means doing it right the first time. Yun, no? So, hindi ko na kailangan i-expound pa 
nabanggit na ni Ms. Alamo ko ano yung difference ng efficiency and effectiveness. Ini-stress out na rin siya previously sa organization management at inulit natin ulit sa economics. Sir, bakit ganun? Parang paulit-ulit lang yung topic ng efficiency and effectiveness. Kasi po, hindi lang naman siya sa organizational management. Hindi lang po siya sa economics. Lahat po ng aspects, lahat ng subjects, nagkakaroon ng efficiency and effectiveness. Even scientific research needs efficiency and effectiveness. Kaya nga, ang ating mga vaccines ay meron tinatawag na 95% effectivity rate. Huh? Ayan. Ano ba yan? Okay. So, effectiveness, no? sample niya rito, it means doing it right the first time, like starting of a car or the flick of a light switch. A repetition or doing it the second time means you have used the twice the amount of resources and energy. No? Ibig sabihin, sayang yung effort mo nung una. No? Nagawa mo ng paraan, pero sayang yung unang try. So, as much as possible, you must achieve it on the first try. Okay. Ito hindi na masyadong ano to, no? Uh, kyo, kyo na lang siya, no? There is also a notion of comparable advantage. Hmm. Of nations, kulang ako ng off, where the country that produces at the least cost should produce such products in excess to earn the foreign exchange to allow it to purchase goods and services. Let's say, uh, Alam niyo argan oil? Usong-usong uh, ngayon yan, argan oil. Ang main producer ng argan oil is Morocco. Morocco. No? Hindi naman ng Pilipinas sikat ang sa, sa argan oil. Eh. Sikat tayo sa coconut oil. Hindi rin naman tayo sikat sa olive oil. Ang sikat sa olive oil are the Mediterranean countries. So you must maximize that. Tayo, meron tayong coconuts, then we must utilize it to make coconut oil to earn the foreign exchange to allow it to purchase. So, pag bumibenta ka ng coconut oil, anong pwede mong pamalit? Pwede kang bumili, let's say, ng olive oil or argan oil or uh, Icelandic sea salt, caviar, etc., etc., etc. Yun po ang ibig sabihin ng efficiency and effectiveness. Ano pa? Hmm. Okay. Changes in relative profitability of products. Extend tayo ng konti, no? kahit mga 11 naman lang. Uh, sorry. Uh, kindly read uh, Mr. Diaz. Kindly read changes in relative profitability of products. Mr. Diaz. Diaz. Yes, sir. Okay, kindly read. Changes in relative profit, profit, profitability of products. A company may switch its production activities from one product to another. Some of the causes may include profitability of one's product, competition, and the market for one item disappears. And political factors, okay. No, thank you. Um, okay, let's say merong isang certain company na ang items nga. I let's say, ang tag dito. Nadidistract ako dun sa bill. Eh. <laughs> Sorry, ah. Okay. Uh, yung Samsung, no? people are familiar with Samsung, right? Of course, no? maraming endorsers, sikat na cell phone brand. But did you know that Samsung existed way, way back, mga 1920s? No? Tingnan nga natin. Check ko nga para hindi ako mapahiya. History of Samsung. So, dati naman, no, nung 1930s, walang Samsung na cellphone. Nakakatawa ko merong cellphone nung 1930s. Okay. So, sabi rito sa Britannica, Samsung was founded 
in March 1, 1938 by Lee Byung Chul. So, paano nagsimula ang Samsung? Ano ang tinitinda ni Samsung dati? Noodles and other goods produced in and around the city and exporting them to China and its provinces. Huh? At one time, nagtinda rin sila ng mga textiles. During the 1970s, the company expanded its textile manufacturing business to cover the full line of production. No? Tapos, nagkaroon din sila ng mga ibang business. Pero, sinanimo si Samsung for the cell phone. Meron din silang makeup noon. No? But, they shifted gradually papunta sa tech. Kasi, they saw that the future lies in technology. No? Let's see, sabi nga rito, if a company can produce both product A and product B, no? gagamit ka naman ng same machinery and skills. Or kunwari na lang, uh, kaya mo mag-produce ng paper at boxes. No? Pero kung let's say mas mabenta yung paper mo kaysa sa boxes, then you might have the decision to change your product to boxes. Magpo-focus ka dun sa boxes rather than sabay mo sila ipoproduce. Ngayon, anong pwede mangyari para mawala isang item? One product might disappear due to political factors. Or, uh, talagang mas mataas na yung demand for the other product. Let's say, uh, paper. Okay. Hi. Okay. So ito rin yung equation. You have it on the book, page, uh, page 46. No? So hindi ko na siya masyadong i-discuss, pero ito lang siya. The influences of demand can, sum, can be summarized into this equation. QS equals a function of PCT. V, Y, no, small letters, and pi uh, sub zero, subset of one. We're in, ito na yung mga factors na yun. Kanina pa nagbebel eh. Table 5.1, you have equilibrium price and quantity. No? So ano po ba yung equilibrium price and quantity? The equilibrium price is when the intentions of suppliers are just matched by the intention of buyers. Ibig sabihin, similar lang po. Huh? Match lang. Wala, hindi tayo nagsasobra ng uh, supply. Where the amount of goods and services demanded is just equal to the amount provided. There is no pressure from either supply or demand to move away from the price. So the market forces are in a state of equilibrium. So similar lang dun sa kaninang pinanggit ko, market equilibrium. So a good example here, 15 pesos per kilo. Huh? Producers are willing to supply 200. Dito 700. Pag 50 pesos, 525 na lang. Huh? Hanggang dito lang ang kaya ng mga tao. Pero yung producer willing to supply 900. So, ibig sabihin, ito yun. Ito yung pinakamaganda. Ito yung tinatawag na equilibrium price and quantity. Pag nasa 35 pesos per kilo yung item, producers have are willing to supply 600 and consumers are willing to buy 600 of that item. So, ito yung graph. Huh? Similar to the book, price and quantity, unite. No? Pinagtagpo at pinagtadhana. No? Okay. Shape of the demand curve. Kindly read, shape of the demand curve, Ms. Descalyar. Hi. 
Shape of the demand curve, Ms. Descalyar, nandiyan ba siya? Number one. Descalyar, number two. Descalyar, number three. Hala. Okay. Si ano ba? Natawag ko na. Natawag ko na eh. Wait lang ha. So halos lahat pala natawag ko na. Mr. Jesalba. Are you there, Jesalba? Sure. Okay, kindly read na lang yung ship of the demand curve. An increase is in price will lead to a shift in the demand curve to the right. And increase in quantity. The supply intentions remain unchanged. Pasensya na doon sa background music ko ha. Pero wala eh. <laughs> Okay. Um, ay, nako. Hindi na makakonsentrate. Okay. Okay, okay. There can be changes in the equilibrium price and quantity. Uh, changes. Changes. That are brought about by influences on both the demand and supply. Example, there is a change in demand brought about by market factors and induced by advertising. So, double combination, no? Dahil sa market hey, nako, market factors at advertising. An increase in price will lead to a shift in the demand curve to the right. So, tumaas yung presyo mo, tumaas yung quantity mo, shift to the right. At tumas yung presyo mo, tumas yung quantity mo, tumas din yung demand. So, lahat sila shift to the right. The supply intentions, ito yung S, supply, remain unchanged. Ganun pa rin siya. Next. Na, another 30 minutes, kaya pa kaya? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Ship of the supply curve. Kindly read and uh, incarnation. Kindly read. Jump siya. Incarnation. Number one. Incarnation. Number two. Wala. Mukhang nakatulog siya. Ayan, ayan, ayan. Okay, thank you. Narinig ko na may sinabi niya. Okay. So, ito naman yung ship of the supply curve. So, yung sample niya rito is nabawasan, no? So, ito yung Upward movement, tumas yung presyo mo. And then, yung quantity mo, nabuwasan. Ito yung usually nangyayari sa, mar sa merkado or sa market. Umukunti yung quantity mo. Umukunti yung supply mo ng pork. Tumataas ang presyo. Therefore, supply curve shifts to the left. Pero yung demand mo, ganun pa rin eh, similar pa rin. So, yun nga yung nangyayari ngayon. No? Let's say, tumaas yung gulay. Same demand, lower quantity, higher price. Therefore, it shifts to the left. Last one. Ship of both supply and demand curve. Uh, sino si MJ? Tapos na eh. Tapos na siya na eh. Ah, wait lang. Miss Osea, kindly read. Sir, ni po ba? Yes, I can hear you. She took both supply and demand curve. There is an upward movement in price when the quantity of supply falls with demand remaining unchanged. Okay. Tama ba ako ng drawing? Ay, mali yung picture ko. Sorry. Mali yung picture ko. Nakulang ng isa. 
Okay, ano na lang. Wait lang, ha? Uh, you have a sample on the book. Malitong ano ko. Wala na palitan. Wala ko mahanap na na eh. Ano nangyari? Ba't di ako maka ano? Ay, nako. Okay. Oh. You have a sample of that ship of the boat supply and demand curves on page 48. Sorry. Oh. So there is a major increase in demand brought about by change in customer taste. Several companies were incentivized by the increase in demand so the good can be mass produced at a lower unit cost. So to mass yung demand, Pero konti pa lang yung supply mo. Pero yung presyo mo, same. Ganun pa rin yung presyo. Okay. The new supply schedule and the increase in demand results in a fresh equilibrium price. Nagbago na naman ulit ang kwento and quantity. The fresh equilibrium is at a higher price. So, and lower quantity. So, siyempre, bago lang yung product. So, konti pa lang yung quantity mo. This is shown in 5.4. Ito yun, yung nasa book. The increased demand and supply ship both to the right. Demand, supply, ship to the right. Increasing quantity with P almost unchanged. Kaya pa ka? Okay, so medyo mahaba yung uh, case against price regulation. Okay, uh, kindly read the first bullet point. Well, Natawag ko na ba lahat? Well, Natawag ko na yata lahat. Miss Tayag, kindly read case against price regulation. Three po. Yes, I can hear you. Price control or restrict set in place and enforced by governments in the price that can be charged for goods and service in a market. Income in a price floor. Okay. So, ito yung nangyayari typically sa price regulation. It's either may price ceiling or price floor. Hindi playboy yan, hindi natitikman yan, pero ganun yung wording ng reference ko. No? It comes in two flavors, a price ceiling and price floor. So, okay. Such controls are implemented in order to maintain affordability of goods. So, kaya nga, kahit hindi tayo familiar masyado sa economics, narinig natin sa mga balita na meron price ceiling. Pero yung price floor, bihira natin marinig. Are implemented in order to maintain affordability of goods, even during shortages. And to slow inflation, or alternatively, to ensure a minimum income for providers of certain goods, or to try to achieve a living wage. No? Kasi pag bumagyo, walang supply, nauubos yung supply mo, yung demand mo, remain constant. So, minsan ang ginagawa ng mga merchants, tinataasan nila yung presyo ng item para lang makabawi sila or in other cases, para kumita sila. No? Over the long time, however, price controls can lead to problems such as shortages. Yun nga, no? Uh, na, hindi nagre-replenish yung supply mo, so nababawasan yung items mo. Ration, rationing. So, nung, if you're familiar ng ECQ, nagkaubusan ng alcohol. Ang taas-taas ng alcohol, ang taas-taas ng face mask, taas-taas ng face shield. Nagkaroon ng mga supermarket ng mga parang limitation na isang tao, ito lang ang pwede mong bilhin. 
ganito lang karami yung limit ng toilet paper na kaya mong bilhin. Ganito lang karami yung alcohol na pwede mong bilhin. Uh, inferior product quality and black markets. Uh, okay, kindly read price regulation yung hindi na lang natatawag. I think si... Natawag na ba si Mr... Mr. Borja, kindly read. Wala? Well, kung wala, di okay na. Mukhang natawag ko na lahat eh. Okay. So, price regulation is the imposition of either minimum or a maximum price by government decree or law or an imposition of a good government or international organization. Okay, chance nyo na para makabawi sa recitation. Sinong gusto mag-read ng price ceiling? Can anyone read? Yes, Mr. Javier. Well, sir. Sir, ah. po. Yes, I can hear you. Price ceiling, a price control or limit on how much the maximum price can be charged for a product, commodity, or service. Governments use price ceilings to protect consumers from conditions that could make commodities prohib prohibitively expensive. Okay. So, yan yung pag masyadong mataas na yung demand. No? Price ceiling, hanggang dito lang. Kaya nga nung nagmahal yung pork, maraming stores ang nag-close kasi nag-impose ang government ng price ceiling. Okay. Hanggang dito ka lang. Hindi ka na pwede magtaas. Uh, next, price floor. Uh, Miss Akle. Si Akle ba yung nakita ko kanina? Akle? A price floor. A government or group imposed price control or limit on the minimum price can be charged for a product, good, commodity, or service. Government use price floors to keep certain prices from going too low. Okay. Ah, uh, ito naman no, para kumita pa rin yung mga businesses kasi minsan pag intense yung competition, ang ginagawa nila diyan, pababaan ng PC. No? Ibababa nila ng ibababa yung price hanggang hanggang sa hindi mo na kayang labanan yung competitor mo. So that's why the government places the price floor. Ops, ang let's say ang isang bag ng asin ay 10 pesos lang. Hindi mo na pwedeng ibenta ng 5 piso lang. Yan. Next. Oh, ito yung uh, wala sa book to. No? Pinakita ko lang. Price ceiling versus price floor. So, pinagtagpo, pinagtadhana, no? quantity 1 and quantity 2, supply and demand. Yung pinaka-apex nun, you have the price ceiling for P2, price number 2. And for pre P1 naman, you have the price floor. Nagahalo-halo na yung salita ko. Okay. Wages shortages and unemployment. Ilang slide pa ba ako? <laughs> okay. Kindly read the first bullet point. Sinong gusto? Nauna si ano. Sige, magbibigay ako ng sequence. No? Borka, Bork, Tanaka, Bustamante. Teka. Reyes. Patricio, Mamaradlo, Almandares, Gonzales, Brazal. Tapusin lang natin. No? Okay. Yung unang tinawag, Miss Borca. Kindly read the first bullet point. Minimum wages. The minimum amount of remuneration that an employer is required to pay wage earners for the work performed during a given period which cannot be reduced by collective agreement or an individual contract. Okay. Uh, so, na-discuss na natin yung, yung wages ng FABM, no? si Judith. Uh, yung minimum wage naman, ito yung nasa loss natin. Magkano yung minimum wage natin for today? Right now, it's 537 for NCR. Pero nung nag, uh, nag-work ako no, as assistant sa school, ang minimum wage pa nung time na yun is only 320 pesos. No? 2006. 
Next bullet point. Si sino ba yung tinaw ko? Tanaka. The labor force in the Philippines is regulated by the Department of Labor and Employment that was established on December 8, 1933. Okay. Ako na magbabasa para kay ano, no? Kay Ms. Bustamante. So nakakredit na siya. The Philippines has the 13th largest, sabi ng book, no? In the world. Uh, pero according to the CIA World Factbook, no, as recently as 2019, the Philippines is now the 15th largest. Huh? So na demo tayo. Dati tayo in 13, but now we're only 15. But kung tatanggalin mo si European Union, de, ganun pa rin eh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, we're the 15th largest at 42,780,000 of the workforce. As you can see, mas maraming population ng Pilipinas kaysa sa Germany, but Germany has the bigger labor force. That means maraming bata sa Pilipinas. And yan din yun. Okay. May matatawag pa ba ako mamaya? Okay. Here are the resort. I have resort. Gusto ko na mag-swimming. <laughs> Here are the results of the January 2021 Labor Force Survey. No? So fresh na fresh pa po siya. Discuss natin last time si employment and under unemployment. Here you have 8.7% unemployment rate. Nung kasagsaga ng GCQ, ng ECQ, 17.6 tayo. Unti-unti nag-hiring ulit, 10%. And now, steady pa rin tayo at 8.7%. Okay. Uh, kindly read na lang. Uh, sino ba yun? Ms. Reyes. Reyes. So, yung pang-una po. Yes. The government will not react to the reduce the minimum wage assuming it is possible to do so. Ibig sabihin surplus na maraming mga walang trabaho. No? Next. Patricio. Second bullet. Patricio. Para makabawi tayo sa recitation. Wages cannot be reduced but only increased in the Philippines. Yes. The marginalized and poor do not have much choice since they have to work to survive. Correct, no? Hindi, wala pa naman ako narinig na country na nagbaba ng minimum wage. Let's say 537 na, babawiin mo ulit, gagawin mong 512. Back to the previous price. Hindi naman kasi pwede yun kasi tumataas ang presyo ng mga bilihin tapos magbababa ka ng, ng minimum wage. No? And last, bullet point for this slide, mamaradlo. The government must decide whether the social benefits to be gained from market regulation can justify the cost and the opportunity cost of the resources used in maintaining such regulations. Okay. Ano ba yung mga social benefits like yung SSS natin, pag-ibig, no? that can justify the cost and the opportunity cost yung mga kailangan mong gawin sa minimum wage? Wait lang. Okay. So this is a classical equation for labor. Count the employed and the unemployed as comprising of the total labor force. Nasaan na yan? No? Ito yung, ito yung employment rate mo, 91.3. Ano yung unemployment rate mo? It's 8.7. Then you have a total of 100%. But, Keep in mind, sa 91% natin, 16% no? are underemployed. Nabanggit ko na previously ko ano yung underemployed. Let's say you are already on the managerial level, pero dahil natanggal ka sa trabaho, natanggap ka ng bagong company, pero demoted ka. Or overqualified, so to speak. Okay, here are the daily wages, daily minimum wages of the countries in the ASEAN region. Huh? 
As you can see, si Brunei at Singapore bukod tanging no minimum wage. So, depende sa kanila yan. No? Uh, we will not elaborate on them. Sa Pilipinas, 5.75. Sa Indonesia, mas mababa ang pasweldo sa kanila. 3.33 dollars lang. Ah, uh, ito yung pinakamababa, no? Kasi sa Pilipinas, 5.75, 260 something lang yan. Vietnam as a higher minimum, pero dun sa capital nila, hindi nagkakaiba. Konti lang ang deprensya compared to that of the provinces. The biggest uh, minimum wage is Thailand, no? $9. And mas marami kang mabibili sa $9 nila compared sa $9 ng Pilipinas. Ayan. Ayan yung mga tao. And in a few years or so, ganyan din tayo. Kayo pala, kayo. Maghahanap ng trabaho. Whether here in the Philippines or abroad. Okay. So... The NLRC, as the lead government agency tasked to resolve labor management disputes, plays a crucial and vital role in promoting and enhancing labor justice towards the attainment of decent growth, no? required for inclusive growth. And this is another problem sa mga companies ngayon, the contractualization of workers. Hindi pa rin matapos-tapos yung problema na yan. Kasi ang rules ngayon is that you have to be employed for at least six months to be considered as a, as a regular employee. Pero ang gagawin sa'yo ng company, yung ibang company, magpapasign sila sa'yo ng waiver in the fifth month that you are resigning. Diba? They have the loopholes on the law. Wages and salaries defined. So, sino pa ba yung hindi ko natawag? Almendares, kindly read wages. Wages, paid to blue-colored employees, paid daily, weekly or monthly, paid to jobs which can be measured in terms of money's worth. Okay. Wages, ito yung alam natin sa Tagalog na sahod. No? They are paid daily, weekly or monthly. Pero usually, weekly. Bihira yun daily. Bihirang bihira yan. Salary, uh, Gonzales. Ang kahabol na lang tayo na konting time. Gonzales. Diyan pa ba siya? Paid, sir. Yes, I can hear you. Salary, paid to white-colored employees. Paid in monthly basis, paid to employees whose contribution cannot be measured easily. Okay. Salary sa Tagalog ay sweldo. Katulad ni Judith, no? yung binanggit natin last term. White-collared employees no? and usually monthly. Pero hindi naman talaga monthly. Uh, rather, uh, quincenas no? in the Philippine practice. But sa... Uh, other professions, meron sila naman yung ang sweldo mo is performance base. Huh? Like sa mga salesman, meron kang sweldo na maliit, pero yung commission mo is when you sell another, when you sell an item or two. Huh? And compensation, ako na lang muna, a comparative term including wages and all other allowances and benefits. So na-discuss na natin si compensation Huwag na natin balikan, no? Ayan, here is an example of the white and blue collar jobs. Though, these days, medyo nawala na yung ganyang definition. Uh, because in the past, blue collar jobs, people, of course, doon nga nang galing, they always wear blue, no? blue collar. Pero ito, blue collar din naman, eh, white collar. No? This is the white collar, someone who is a professional, whether he is working as a manager, a lawyer, a doctor. Though ang doctor is actually sila yung talagang white, no? white jacket, na? white coat. An engineer, no? 
yung mga blue collar examples are construction workers, manufacturing, uh, dito? Plant workers, yung mga nagtatrabaho sa factory, mga driver, huh? and so and so forth. Okay, Phillips curve. Uh, kindly read na lang, konti na lang tayo, matatapos na tayo. Kindly read, Miss Brazal. Phillips curve, long run tracks that relationship between inflation and unemployment. There is no effect on the unemployment rate in the long term. Stop. Okay. So, yung pinakita ng, pinakita sa book is magkahiwalay yung Phillips curve if I'm not. Check ko nga. Yeah, magkahiwalay sila. Pero pwede mo siyang pagsamahin. No? So, the Phillips curve has two time frames, the short run and the long run. Huh? So, yung long run nga, sabi ni Ms. Brazal, tracks the relationship between inflation and unemployment. Uh, okay. Uh, andyan na ba siya, no? Diaz, are you there? Diaz? Onlinely present, physically absent. Diaz, last, wala. Okay. So, short run shows the inverse relationship naman. Ito yun, short run. Between the inflation and unemployment. When inflation goes down, the unemployment rate increases. Okay, so medyo mahaba pala to. May 14 minutes pa naman ako. So the topic, no, ito yung focus natin kasi ito yung nangyayari right now all over the world. No? Not just in the Philippines but all over the world. Topic of focus is downsizing. Downsizing is a phenomenon that started during the 1980s. It has become common to hear the word downsizing in business today or downsizing's alternative term, layoffs. So ito yung reference, no? fresh na fresh pa, 2014. A more politically correct term is right-sizing. Whether it's down, it's right, no? nagsasizing ka pa rin, nagbawas ka ng tao. Generally, downsizing is defined as a decrease in the size of the workforce of a company. Bakit nagbawas ng tao? Huh? This was by Agu et al. 2014. It can also be carried out to align the firm's skill and talent with the broader market. A good example is that a company may pursue downsizing to weed out employees with obsolete skills that may not be useful in its future direction. Uh, this is a problem for now. Lalo na yung mga accountants in the future, some say the accounting profession will become obsolete. I don't think so. Hindi mawawala ang accountant sa, sa practice. Hindi kayo mau-overtake ng IT. Though, it will be good to practice or to learn more skills and not just to rely on your bread and butter. Huh? Okay. Is a common organizational practice, usually associated with economic downturns. So, katulad last year, nagkaroon tayo ng COVID-19 pandemic, nagkaroon ng downsizing ang mga companies. Failing businesses and mergers and acquisitions. Here are the 15 factors that cause downsizing. This is by Casio, 2012. So, hindi ko na siya i-expound further due to time constraints, pero more on organizational management naman kasi to. Declining demand, cutting costs, increasing earnings, huh? imitation of competing firms, removal of customary practices such as lifelong improve, lifelong employment. Dati, usong-uso yan yung dyan ka na masukan, dyan ka rin magre-retiro. Pero now, iba na yung laro ngayon eh. You can find better opportunities elsewhere. Globalization and competition, differences in labor costs, differences in industry conditions, workforce pool, technological improvements, and stock market incentives. Internal factors include mergers and acquisitions, M&A. Uh, company 1 and Company 2 magsasama sila. 
No? Number two, corporate governance practices. Number three, CEO demographic characteristics. And number, and letter D, human resource policies. Consequences of downsizing. So some companies offer downsizing on a large scale basis to all their employees. However, results are not as what they desire as employees who are good and can get employment anytime elsewhere tend to avail retrenchment. So yun yung, kung akala ng company nakakatipid sila, yes, nakakatipid sila, but in the long run, tatamaan pa rin sila. Kasi yung mga magagaling, yun yung mga umaalis. Yung mga natitira sa company, yun yung tinatawag nilang latak. Huh? Yung mga wala na mapuntahan. No? However, there is evidence that downsizing can have adverse long-term consequences. Downsizing may actually increase the likelihood of bankruptcy by reducing productivity, customer satisfaction, and morale. Firms that have downsized are much more likely to declare bankruptcy in the future irrespective of their financial health. Hindi nila masustain. No? Kasi nag-downsize ka nga, eh, nabawasan, nabawasan yung mga tao mo, dumami na trabaho nila ng mga naiwan. Yung mga, mga magagaling na wala. Yung mga medyo pepetex-petex, yun yung mga natira. Ayan, no? So, hindi ko na ayan yan. Apektado, no? Not just employees, kundi pati yung mga pinapakain ng mga empleyado. No? Let's say, ang parents mo, na downsizing sila, na layoff sila, na walang sila ng trabaho, paano yung mga pinapaaral nila? Paano kayong mga anak, mga bata? Yung mga umaasa sa inyong magulang? No? So, it impacts all employees negatively. An example of downsizing is yung airline and hospitality industries were particularly impacted. So, yung iba dyan, no? may, mga na, may nasakyan ako one time na driver ng tuktok, sabi niya, stewardess daw siya dati. No? Naghanap muna sila ng ibang trabaho. Napunta sa restaurant, nag-online business, no? na masukan sa hindi nila forte, underemployment, another effect of downsizing. So, sticky wage, pocket wagers, gusto ko na magsugal. <laughs> sticky wages, if the company is doing well, the workers do not necessarily receive an increase. Yun naman ang reality ng work natin. Eh. Whether you're doing a good job or not, ganun pa rin ang sweldo. Hindi ka naman tagapagmana ng company. Kasi yun naman ang napag-usapan nyo ng HR before you were hired. So, usually, hindi natatanggap yung increase, but you can ask for a raise. Boss, pwede po ba akong taasan? Pwede po bang taasan yung sweldo ko? But they will sometimes say na, eh hanggang dito lang naman ang salary ng work mo. There's nothing you can do. Uh, and it also is observed when employees are unaware of the wage and salary levels among different employers. Okay, 10 slides. Huh? So, kaya naman. Okay. Ay, mali. <laughs> Wait lang ah. Konti na lang eh. Okay. From current slide na. So, uh, featured economist number one, no? si Karl Marx. Uh, so, ang contributions niya is Das Kapital, no? Marxism, which became the government of communism or socialism, and one of the 19th century's three masters of the school of suspicion, alongside Friedrich Nietzsche and Sigmund Freud. Uh, you can read the works of these three gentlemen. Bala na kayo, no? It's up to you. And see si Arthur Okun. Uh, 
He formulated Okun's law, which states that short-run unemployment rate is reduced by 1% for every 3% increases in GDP. Huh? He is also known for the misery index and the book Equality and Efficiency, the Big Trade-Off. So, ano na lang to, no? This is poverty versus employment rates on the nations of Asia. No? Asia-wide na siya, hindi lang siya Southeast Asia. Yan, no? And here we have the economic freedom. Matapos na tayo actually. Yeah. Okay. So population rate and economic growth. Uh, ito yung apat na quarter. No? The four quarters of economic freedom. First is the most free. Second, yung sakto lang. Third, medyo alanganin. And fourth, Maraming restrictions. As you can see, the Philippines is number uh, falls under the second quartile. So, meron pa rin namang restrictions, pero hindi naman katulad nitong nasa pangatlo, na medyo mahikpit. Gitna tayo ng hikpit at uh, free. No? So, this is a report published by the Fraser Institute. All rights reserved, no? So, wag na natin tingnan yan. Okay, economic freedom, merong article sa book. No? So, okay. Okay. So, latest to, no? March 5, fresh na fresh pa, March 5, 2021. So, this is the reference. So 60.2 ang Pilipinas. The average is 61.6. The Philippines got a score of 64.1. So dito naglalaro ang Philippines. 64, 63, 65. 64, 63, 65. Huh? The highest we, ha we got recently is 65.6 under President Duterte, no? Pero dati nasa 50-something lang tayo. Okay. As per Asian nations, no, or ASEAN, nasa 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Pangsyam lang tayo. No? Pangsyam tayo sa Asia. At 64.1. Okay. So population, no. Uh, the United ex the United Nations expect that we will hit 8.3 billion people by 2028. Uh, study lang yan. Pero malaki yung chance na umabot tayo ng 20 ng 8.3 billion. By 2100, the world's population might reach what? 11.2? 16.6? Wow, grabe yun. Or bumaba pa tayo, no? 8.7 billion. This is from Business Insider. So here is the projected world population. So, ito yung projection for 2100. No? It's either tataas or bababa. Though I might say it will go down rather than 